Hello everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to talk about designing a scrollable carousel widget. The carousel widget allows you to add interesting and dynamic galleries to your pages. And a scrollable carousel widget allows you to scroll through the pictures instead of having to use the left and right button. So let's dive into it. As always, I'd like to talk about the requirements, component architecture, some optimizations, and other considerations. The requirements are straightforward. We want to design a carousel that has a scrollable area with cards, a left button and a right button. The card should have an image and an optional description. Carousel could be circular or non-circular. Circular in this case means infinite horizontal scrolling. If you scroll or navigate to the left edge, a circular carousel allows you to keep going left and it will show the pictures as if the end of the carousel is connected to the beginning. A non-circular carousel doesn't allow you to go any further once you reach the left end or the right end. We should be able to scroll using the left and right button, and this carousel widget should work even in a container that has direction set as right to left. For the non-functional requirements, I'm going to talk about accessibility, performance considerations, responsiveness, and cross-browser support. So, let's start with the component architecture. Here's what I envision. There will be a scrollable carousel container which contains the left button, right button, and a scrollable area. The scrollable area will have a list of cards. Let's take a closer look at the properties here. We use arrow size to define the size of the arrow. This is more restrictive, but you can also have an arrow style instead if you'd like the button to be more customizable. We will specify card width to set the mean width of the card. Additional style object could be used to set whether the card would have fixed width or responsive to the size of the container it is in. Scrolling disabled allows you to disable the scrolling behavior and only navigate using left and right button. We use gap to specify the width between cards. Button hidden when set to true hides the left and right button. We can define the width of the container using max content window width. Initial scroll offset property can be passed in to initialize the carousel to a certain position. Its circular defines whether infinite horizontal scrolling is enabled. Down below, children component hold all the cards. We can also pass in left and right button and their event handlers along with the accessibility configurations. Now that we talked about the component architecture, I want to talk about the scrolling behavior in circular and non-circular scenarios. Let's start with the non-circular scenario. The non-circular carousel is pretty straightforward. Suppose you have a container on a page that has width of 500 pixel and you have a total of four cards. Each card is 200 pixel. And suppose only two cards can fit into the container. We can use the container scroll left property to keep track of what cards should be shown. Things get a little bit more interesting when we want to implement the circular carousel. Likewise, let's start with the setup. Say we have four cards and suppose only two would fit into the container. In order to achieve infinite horizontal scrolling, let's duplicate the card 3 and 4 and put it to the left of card 1. Duplicate card 1 and 2 and put it after card 4. This way, when user scrolls and hit the left edge of the scrollable area, what happens is we don't move the cards, but we use an instant scroll to to scroll the container back to where the original card 3 is. Similarly, if the user scrolls and hit the right edge, we scroll the container back to where the card 1 is. What happens when there is 5 cards? It is actually pretty similar, but we copy 3 cards instead of 2 cards. So we will have card 2, 3, and 4 cloned before original card 1 and card 0, 1, 2 cloned after original card 4. By using this approach, we can achieve the infinite horizontal scrolling. This way, we also only have limited size of the DOM elements. We can use the resize observer to monitor the viewport width. And whenever there's a resize of the screen, we can decide how many cards can fit into the container. We can also hide the scroll bar so that the experience is better. The other thing I want to mention is things get a little more complex when the container of the carousel widget defines the direction as right to left. This is because there are different behaviors across different browsers and even for same browser, new versions could have totally different behavior. 
So let's use Chrome as an example here. In newer versions of Chrome, the scroll left is zero when the scroll bar is at its rightmost position, at the, which means it's at the start of the scrolled content, and then increasingly negative as you scroll towards the end of the content. However, in older version of the Chrome, scroll left works same as left to right, but starts at the max scrollable area width. The other common questions asked here would be, how do you implement the left and right button? In this case, we probably want to position the button in the middle vertically, so we can use absolute positioning along with the top number. There are newer properties we can use in modern browsers, including scroll snap type, which is used on scroll container to state the start and direction of scrolling, scroll snaps align, which is used on child elements in order to set the position that scrolling will snap to. In the end, I want to mention some accessibility considerations. When we want to implement the circular carousel, we can use the area hidden property for the cloned cards so that they are not announced in the screen reader. We can use negative tab index on the cloned cards as well so that those cards are not tabbable. We can specify the article row on the cards and always specify alt properties for the pictures. That's about it for today and please leave in the comments below about what you think are important to consider for this question. Please consider giving me a like and subscribe if you find the content useful. I post front-end system design questions regularly on a weekly to bi-weekly basis and more content about component design is coming so stay tuned.